In this video, we'll compare REST API with GraphQL and gRPC. We'll deploy these applications to Kubernetes cluster in AdBS and measure latency, throughput, as well as saturation of each application. Alright, let's go ahead and run the test. The entire test took around 2 hours, and I usually compress it to just a few minutes while editing. So one of the most important metrics for any client facing application is latency, and we use P90 percentile to measure it. For the first few minutes, you might notice that gRPC is slightly slower than the other applications without any load. This can be explained by the overhead of serializing and deserializing RPC messages, but this will change soon. At around 10,000 requests per second, you can see that GraphQL starts to degrade. GraphQL is a REST API with a query engine, so it's expected that it will be slower than a regular REST API, as in this example. On the right-hand side, you can see applications' CPU usage, memory usage, and most importantly, network usage. From this network graph, you can clearly see that gRPC client uses much less network, which again will be directly translated to your AWS or Azure bill at the end of the month. At around 24,000 requests per second, GraphQL app started to fail, and I decided to remove it from the graphs until the end of the test. Then we'll go over each graph one by one. So the real competition is between JSON API and gRPC, and you'll see that they flip in a few seconds. Let me run this test for one more minute. As I said, the entire test took around 2 hours. Let's go over throughput first, which is the number of requests per second each application can handle. So GraphQL could only handle 32,000 requests per second. JSON API was able to handle 66,000 requests per second, which is very similar to all my other tests. You can actually compare this test with one where I ran the same application on the VM and Kubernetes to see for yourself the overhead that Kubernetes adds to your workload. Finally, we have gRPC, which reached 90,000 requests per second, which is incredibly good result, comparable to Rust and Zeek REST APIs. Next, we have latency. As expected, GraphQL, due to its query engine, adds additional latency, and gRPC and REST API are very close to each other. For the first half of the test, with CPU usage under 40%, REST API's latency was lower, and when we added more load, gRPC was much more stable. This is exactly what you need for your microservices. Next, we have CPU usage. You can see that by the end, gRPC and REST converge. Then, network usage. GraphQL ended with lower usage, just because it could not handle the same amount of requests. The same applies to the REST API by the end of the test. So you can actually see a huge difference in network usage between JSON and gRPC. And finally, memory usage, which doesn't really play a significant role in this test, but you can see that gRPC has much smaller memory footprint. So in my opinion, if you need API for your web application, 
REST API is the way to go. For your mobile application, if you can use gRPC, it would improve latency and user experience. And you should definitely use gRPC for service-to-service -service communication. Take a look at this benchmark as well between Postgres and MySQL and Redis versus Memcached. You might learn something new.